In this video, I'm going to go through how to calculate a gradient from a graph. Now in physics, we have graphs a lot, and many times the graphs are created from data from our experiments. So I've drawn some little blue dots on here, not extremely well, but you know, a quick, easy diagram. Now you can see that we've got lines of best fit. They're not perfect. This is not like math class where all the data will be perfectly on our line. But that's why we call it a line of best fit. It would be like if all of my measurements were perfect and everything was going perfectly in my experiment, all points would be on that line of best fit. So the first thing I want to caution is don't go and use the points. Even if you think like this one here, you say, yes, it's right on the line. Actually choose points from the line of best fit and not data points. So I'm going to get rid of them right now. Okay, so let's do the first um, section of the line, this one right here, and let's find a gradient of it. Remember, gradient is kind of like a measurement of how steep it is, and we need to make sure we use values from the graph, not just the number of boxes. So what we need to do is we need to grab and look at the line of best fit and get points that are on the line that are easy to read. For example, this one here, you might say, it looks like it's crossing right here. Another one, and we want to go them far apart as we can because that way they are going to be um, better and more accurate than if we had two points that are really close together. So in this particular one, I'm going to choose on purpose, I'm not going to choose the end of the lines. You could, um, but I'm going to on purpose so the values are going to stand out better when I do my calculations. I'm going to use this one and this one here. So the very first thing you want to do is you want to get the coordinates of those points. Remember we write there x1, comma, y1. So let me go ahead and write those on. Okay, so you need to look at the scale and say, all right, how much is each little small box? So I've got here 34 at the top in the x direction because each small box in the x direction is two. So this one will be 34 and this x direction is 6. Okay, so now we have these two points. We want to measure how much of a rise there is compared to the run. So in some places, they actually refer to gradient as being rise over run. I'm going to make my picture a little smaller here so then we can actually, now that we've got the values, see the math a little easier. So, so as I said, some places would say gradient is rise over run, or your math teacher might say m equals y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. Basically, we're looking about how high does it go compared to how far in the horizontal direction. So if I take a look at my numbers, my y values, the first one is 600 minus the one down below is 100. And in the x direction, I've got 34 for this point at the top minus 6. Now my calculator has 17 point. And there's a lot of decimal places there. Realize that we can't read this graph very accurately. So three figures, significant figures is more than enough. But remember, this 600 here, this value, those had units of meters. And these have units of seconds. So in fact, my answer is 17.9 meters per second. So let's get rid of this and continue with the second part of the graph. And we'll use the really obvious points here and here. So first thing I did was I read the graph. This is going to be 40 comma 700. Let me just write it over here. 40 comma 700. And the other point is going to be 100 and 1000. Now first of all, if we look, this is a distance time graph and a gradient gives us speed. And the first part is much steeper than the second. That means the first part should have a higher gradient than the second part. If I go and I put those values back into our equation, y1 minus y2 
for x1, x2. As long as you have the points consistent, it's going to work out. Okay, so here we are. It's going to be 1,000 minus 700 and 100 minus 40. Putting that in my calculator, I get 5. Don't forget, the top here have units of meters because they came from my y values. And the bottom is from my x, which is seconds. So 5 meters per second. If you compare that to my answer for the first part, which was 17.9, yes, I'm definitely going slower. One last thing I will want to remind you is that if the line is in this direction, then my gradient should be positive. If my line looks like this, I should have a negative gradient. Okay, so remember we're looking for the difference in the y values divided by the difference in the x values. It's important that we keep them in the same direction. So if I call this one number one, I have to call this one number two. If I put all of these values first, then I have to put all these values second, or vice versa. And if you have it right, then if your gradient is up and to the right, it will be a positive number, and if not, it will be a negative number. In physics, don't forget, you need to use the units that come with those values as well, and we put them in there at the end. So that I hope this will help you calculate a gradient from a graph.